10. The forum today has been designed based on recommendation from many of CDB's youth stakeholders, some of you in this room right now, and focuses on key issues of importance to youth, including peaceful societies, economic empowerment. The Honorable Philip J. Pierre is a prime minister that believes that if you find a job you love, you never work a day in your life. And this is what we are saying to young people. Find something that you love doing. Nine. The theme for this president's chat is access to finance for women-owned and women-led MSMEs. Improving the technical skills um, for women so that they can have sustainable and profitable um, businesses going forward. Putting this in the broader context of what CDB is about. Uh, and at this particular point, we can say our North Star, the driving force is one of creating an environment to promote what we have been labeling resilient prosperity for all. Eight. The symbolic handover ceremony took place on the grounds of the Respiratory Hospital for the Millennium Heights Medical Complex MHMC will be responsible for the delivery of secondary care services. It allows us to construct and retrofit to allow us to open the Cashew's Urban Polyclinic. At the end of the day, all of what we do must, and I repeat, every single thing we do must be for the benefit of people. Seven. Amidst a robust policy undertaking to ensure one university graduate per household in St. Lucia, the Department of Human Resource Development of the Ministry of Education hosted a college fair which brought together seven universities and colleges from the Midwest to Northeast America and Canada, which currently offers scholarships to prospective St. Lucian students for studies at the bachelor's, master's and doctoral levels. This is not a one-off, this is something we're looking to repeat um, over time and as I would have indicated we are extremely committed as an administration to give higher educational opportunities to young people in this country. Six. The Small Machinery Expo organized by the Ministry of Agriculture in collaboration with the Taiwan Technical Mission provided a unique platform to witness firsthand the remarkable potential of mechanization in agriculture. Today I'm glad that we come up with the solution. And this includes for tillers and for cultivators that could help farmers break up hard and complex soil. These innovative tools and advancements have the power to transform the way we cultivate our land, enhance efficiency, reduce labor, boost agricultural yields, and therefore the use must become normal in the sector. Five. Extension officers from across the Caribbean region have gathered for a week-long comprehensive farmer field school facilitator training. The training aims to enhance their facilitation skills and provide them with updated knowledge and tools for delivering effective farmer field school extension programs. This movement has spread globally as an effective teaching um, methodology. The concept embraces the um, preservation of agroecological system to guarantee sustainability of production. Four. The Substance Abuse Advisory Council Secretariat is thankful for the donation of the nicotine replacement therapy, or NRTs, by the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO. St. Lucia has demonstrated its commitment to achieving the objectives of the FCTC with significant milestones being achieved in recent years. Three. St. Lucia's Inland Revenue Department, IRD, and CARICOM, in association with the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, and the World Bank Group, conducted a four-day regional training workshop on foundational transfer pricing. We have no specific legislation to deal with transfer pricing. However, our Income Tax Act does have an element of it, and therefore, it is being practiced already. We want to delve deeper into it to have some more understanding because you would understand that there would be new staff coming on and persons have to continue that, that regime of understanding different aspects of taxation. Two. To avoid the detrimental effects of heat waves, the Ministry of Health advises the public to avoid exposure to direct sunlight 
particularly between the hours of 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. and to regularly drink water. It should be noted that the sugar-laden drinks are not a substitute for water as they contribute to further dehydration. One. Effective Friday, January 16, 2023, the urgent care section of the Victoria Hospital or Respiratory Hospital will be closed to the public to allow for the necessary renovation works for the Castries Urban Polyclinic. The public is advised to access care at any of the other wellness centers. The services of the Cuban Eye Clinic remain open and available to the public from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily, Monday to Friday.